From their boat getting stuck on what looked like a living rock, to fishermen unexpectedly witnessing the birth of a new generation of fish, what these fishermen witnessed truly was shocking. Jumping Carp Boating on the Illinois River isn't the same as it used to be. What once was a peaceful, tranquil river journey is now fraught with dangers. If you're thinking about river monsters or giant river predators, well think again. The danger here literally comes from fish flying directly into your face. These fish that are jumping right at boaters are called Asian carp. These fish are native to Europe and Asia, and for the last hundred years they've been wreaking havoc in U.S. waters as an invasive species. The ancestors of these fish were once captive fish that were released into the wild. Initially, this was in the Mississippi River Basin, and then they spread like wildfire from there. Aside from the obvious dangers of a bone-hard fish hitting you right in the face, Asian carp cause serious damage to the native fish populations in the lakes and rivers that they infest because they outcompete other fish for food and space. Carp are also thought to lower water quality, which can kill off sensitive organisms like native freshwater mussels. Right now, measures are being done to keep the carp population in check, the latest one being electrocuting them, which, in my opinion, is really a weird sight. Wait, that ain't no rock. Canoes getting stuck on river debris such as submerged rocks and rotting logs is pretty commonplace. When this happens, all you probably have to do is get your hands wet by plunging them into the water and untangling your boat from the mess that it got itself into. While that may work most of the time, if you do that in this specific situation, you might actually lose your hand. The See-Through Canoe Company uploaded this video rightly captioned that moment you realize your canoe is stuck on an alligator's back. Quite predictably, the video went pretty viral. Oh, by the way, just in case you're wondering, this definitely happened in Florida. The gator seemed not to mind the sticky situation it got the boat into, and even allowed itself to be dragged by the boat a few feet before finally submerging. Anyway, nothing more I can say about this except... friggin' Florida. The Rare Pink Dolphin Every spring, parts of the Amazon rainforest become flooded, creating a vast tree-canopied sea. During this season, which lasts for about half a year, the Amazon River Dolphin, also known as the Boto, has fun swimming and splashing about. Now, these Botos are a little odd. While they have the characteristic dolphin smile, they have bulbous foreheads and long, skinny beaks. Not something their other maritime relatives have, and instead of being silvery gray, these guys are pink. Scientists believe this coloring to be scar tissue formed after a round of rough games or fighting over conquest. You see, the brighter the pink, the more attractive the guy gets to the women. At least during mating season, which happens when they're confined to the river channel again. Most other times, female bodos are escaping the over-aggressive males. Color aside, the reason for the unique beak is so that the bodos can easily root through the river mud for crustaceans or small fish to eat. The Shigir Idol Many people disregard floating pieces of rotting wood to be common river detritus. Well, after this, you might want to give each one of them a closer look. Might actually turn out to be the discovery of a lifetime. The Shigir Idol stands at 9.2 feet and can be found at the Sverdlovsk Regional Museum of Local Lore in Yekaterinburg, Russia. And believe it or not, this impressive work of art is actually more than twice as old as the Great Pyramid, making it the oldest known wooden statue on the planet. And yes, this thing was found buried in muck underwater. The statue is covered with inscriptions, and while the top part clearly shows a three-dimensional representation of a human's face, the rectangular profile along the torso region is marked by various geometric patterns. According to some, these etchings might be a form of passing knowledge like the story of creation, down the generations which shows that the statue's builders had a unique form of communication. The legendary Will-o'-the-Wisp You ever seen a strange, unexplainable light floating above the waters of a river, a bog, or even a swamp? If you have, then you might have just had an encounter with the legendary Will-o'-the-Wisp. The Will-o'-the-Wisp Will has its origins in European folktale. According to Wikipedia, it comes in a variety of names such as Jack O' Lantern, Friar's Lantern, Hinky Punk, and Hobby Lantern, and is said to lead travelers to their doom by resembling a flickering lamp or lantern. Of course, these supernatural creatures are nothing but products of superstition, and are created to explain phenomena that ancient people couldn't explain. As with all mysterious things, there could be a scientific explanation for this phenomenon, though. As it stands, the modern science explains the light aspect as natural phenomena, such as bioluminescence or chemiluminescence, caused by the oxidation of phosphine, diphosphane, and methane produced by organic decay. Not really as exciting as ghosts or fairies holding mystic lanterns, but hey, facts are facts. A World War II tank. When dredging up riverbeds, you can expect to find a lot of dead things. Dead fish, a discarded toilet seat, and even the odd creature or two. But I don't think you'd be expecting to pull up an entire World War II tank. But that's what people actually pulled out of the Never River back in 2011. 
tank in question was a Soviet KV-1 tank, and this specific tank was used by the Red Army to defend Leningrad from the Nazis during their attack on what is now known as St. Petersburg, Russia during the Second World War. Sometime during that 872-day Nazi siege of the city, this tank found itself at the bottom of the river. When the tank was found, no skeletons were inside it, which meant that the tank crew were able to escape from the doomed vehicle before it was swallowed up by the water. It took a team of soldiers and a massive crane to pull the 50-ton behemoth from its watery grave, and the tank is now on display at the Museum of the Battle of Leningrad. Bull Sharks There's an advantage in swimming in fresh water rather than in salt. That is, you don't have to deal with sharks. Or do ya? Sharks are highly adaptable, and when in the case of this river monster, it's evolved to swim where humans swim, making them one of the three shark species who are responsible for the most attacks on humans. Bull sharks inhabit quite shallow waters, which means that they do have a great opportunity to interact with humans, because the two species tend to share the same area. What's worse is that bull sharks are only one of the few animals who have the goal to attack other creatures the same size or even bigger than themselves. Again, bad news for humans. Bull sharks also frequent the waters of the Amazon River, adding to the already abundant vicious predators of that river. There are many documented cases of bull sharks attacking humans on the river, and as demonstrated by this video from Jeremy Wade, these sharks are strong swimmers, fearless and aggressive, and can in no doubt spell disaster for any swimmer it takes a fancy to. And now it's time for today's best pick. Today's pick shows us this unusually massive creature being fished out of a river. What could this creature be? The Loch Ness Giant Catfish. When watching this clip, which was dubbed the Loch Ness Monster Catfish, you'll definitely come to the conclusion that legendary river monsters do in fact exist. Fact is, river monsters do exist. But like the creature in this clip, they don't have to be stuck in stories of legend. If you want to see a real-life river monster, all you need to do is go out fishing for a Wells Catfish, which is exactly what the creature in this clip is. Wells catfish are huge freshwater fish that can grow to an incredible 16 feet long. These giants are found in lakes and rivers in Europe and are easily recognized by their broad, flat head and huge mouth. They aren't picky when it comes to meals and eat a range of worms, insects, fish, rodents, frogs, and birds. Their mouths contain rows of small but incredibly sharp teeth designed to grab hold on to struggling prey. They also have a reputation for being man-killers, as there's numerous reports of this fearsome fish attacking and killing people, usually fishermen or unsuspecting swimmers. With an extensive death toll attributed to them, these catfish are true monsters. The Miracle of Life How many times have you seen an animal give birth? Some of you may have witnessed this incredible event hundreds of times, some of you just once or twice. However, no matter how many times you see this kind of event unfold, it doesn't get any less magical. Heck, even a river monster such as this giant stingray giving birth makes us all erupt in a collective ah or uh. Renowned river monster angler Jeremy Wade was out catching giant stingrays when he witnessed the miracle of life. He was only hoping to catch one huge specimen, and he never really expected to catch a pregnant female. The fish was so big and heavy that Jeremy was actually pulling the boat towards the fish, rather than pulling the fish towards the boat. In fact, the boat, laden with seven full-grown men, were dragged for over half a mile. What they eventually caught was indeed a giant female freshwater stingray, but as they dragged the fish on shore, it gave them the mother of all surprises. While the stingray was trapped in the net, it gave birth to not one, but two pups. However, the surprises don't end there. Researchers use ultrasound to check if there are any more surprises coming, and lo and behold, there were two more pups just itching to get out. Goes without saying, this is a world first, and the researchers were delighted to have become the first ones to study a stingray pup on its first day of Earth. Humanoid River Monsters Be honest, you see something like this emerging out of a river, you'll definitely turn tail and run as fast as you can. I wouldn't worry though, that's because these swamp things aren't really real, in the uh, I'm gonna terrorize your small village kind of way, but rather real, eye-catching, and mildly terrifying artwork. The artist behind these bizarre sculptures is Sophie Presigiacomo, and she calls these works Homo algus, presumably because they were mostly made from algae. They were put on display at the Marshes Nature Reserve of Seni in the Gulf of Morbihan in France. There were only two at first, but grew to eight morbidly enchanting sculptures in the following years. The figures are modeled with mud and seaweed, with the algae drying within the elements, which is perfect as observers can see the sculptures change their textures and colors as the landscape surrounding them changes according to the season. Kinda creepy if you ask me, but hella cool at the same time. See you all next time!